So it turns out we know a lot more about Toyota and Lexus EVs than we originally thought. <laughs> Welcome back, Leisure Sleet. If you're new, my name's Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean autos, and today we're gonna talk about Lexus and Toyota's EV plans and their design when it comes to what kind of motors they're putting in their electric vehicles. We have a lot more information than we originally thought. But first, we're gonna get into the teaser images that Lexus showed us about its upcoming fully electric vehicle, potentially called the RZ. Then after that, we're gonna dive into what Blue Nexus is and how Toyota plans on using Blue Nexus to power all of their EVs, including their Lexus lineup in the coming years. Well, this should be no surprise to any of you. This is the image of Toyota's EV, but Lexus also teased their EV with a ton of more detail. First image we're gonna talk about is the front of this fully electric Lexus, which it's not the first one because there's already the UX300E. This thing I'm guessing is on the ETNGA platform on a fully new dedicated EV platform, the ETNGA. Now this is the first time we've ever seen a grill with this kind of mirrored blocked matrix here design on the front. We've never seen anything like that, very unique. What does look very similar to current Lexus models though is the spindle grill. It's still there, it's just gonna be more built into the body, into the bumper than as a, a grill that stands out like a sore thumb. These daytime running lights are very much like the current UXs with the eyelashes built in. And of course we have the L finesse built in as well with the Nike swooshes, a lot of people like to call them, or arrowheads or the check marks. It's gonna be all over future Lexus designs. They're not gonna break away from that. The aggressiveness of the hood is just that. It's very aggressive, it's very sporty. And you would think just by this image that it could be a coupe. I think it's actually more of a crossover and we'll, we'll find out here in a little bit. Here's a better image zooming in to onto the front. And if you look, it kind of starts with this grid pattern, as you can see on the right hand side, but it blacks out into nothingness. There's doesn't look like there's any pattern. Of course, the Lexus emblem is illuminated like we saw in the, in the LF30 concept as well as the LF1 concept. And you see a sensor underneath of it and sensors over here. Of course, this would have self-driving capabilities or autonomous driving to some extent. You see gills on this side of the wheel, which we'll get a better shot here in this picture. And you see these subtitles here. The moderator and the designer were talking about how you're gonna have a chance in the near future to see this vehicle. Some people are saying January, so definitely subscribe if you're not because we have so much more coming in the coming months and weeks. Now this image is hard for me to make out. Of course we have the wheel here. It's just really hard to tell because with this sloping roof line, there's just not enough detail in the, in the Lighting is just so funny. Let's go to the next image because that one just confuses me. Next one, first time we've seen taillights like this, I'm assuming they're gonna go all the way across like we see in the current uh, UX as well as the IS that have the lights that sweep across the rear of the vehicle. You can see a, a strong spoiler or deck lid spoiler here built into this coupe-like SUV. I'm thinking QX55 or Germans and, and Porsche has uh, fastback or coupe-like designs on their SUVs. I think this is going to be Lexus's take on that in this potential RZ450e. And this window line, look how big these doors are, but the window line and the, the body swoops up and then you see this rear haunch here. It's really, really tall. To me, this looks like it has a floating roof line similar to the RX, and this body line is similar to the RX. It's a little bit more pronounced how it sweeps up. Just a little bit different angle here, you can get a better idea of the dim full dimensions of the vehicle, and to me, it looks like a small crossover. Pretty low to the ground for a crossover as well. Again, not much to see here. There's just too much going on. Uh, this is a top-down image where you obviously you see the mirror. Of course, this model is equipped with electronic mirrors or cameras on these little mirrors. Here in America, that's not legal yet, but hopefully in the future, we get um, you know mirrors replaced by cameras in some products. And you can see this is still the top down with this line swooping up towards the rear. And that's all we have on the first ever Lexus EV, I should say, mass market EV. I would fully expect this one to come to the United States as well. But I mentioned Blue Nexus earlier. Apparently Blue, Blue Nexus is the supplier for all their upcoming EVs for their motors anyways, not batteries. They have a whole host of battery suppliers. But today we're gonna talk a lot about their motors and how different 
configurations, combinations are gonna be permeating their lineup going forward when it comes to electrification. So this article is from July 31st of this year, 2020, talking about how Toyota is taking even more investment into this company, which is kind of ironic because we'll talk about in a second what Blue Nexus actually is. Blue Nexus, as we go to the, their actual website, we go about to the About Us section. So Blue Nexus is actually made up of Aishin and Denso. Those are both Toyota companies, essentially. Denso used to be fully owned by Toyota. I think now they own about a quarter or 25% of Denso. And Aishin is 51% owned by Toyota. They make like all their transmissions. They provide a ton of products throughout many Japanese companies and they're largely owned by Toyota. So two of Toyota's companies essentially working together and Toyota owns even more of this blue Nexus company. As we just found out in January or July, they own 10% of it or 10% more investment of in what we heard about. With three key components essential for the eDrive module as core competency, we provide a one package solution, including calibration. So there, what are those three core pieces? It's the gear train, the e-motor, and or the electric motor, and the inverter. They're not providing the batteries. Look to Panasonic, BYD, CATL for that. And they're able to put them in hybrids, plug-in hybrids, battery electric vehicles, and fuel cell electric vehicles. Of course, they share Toyota's question mark cloud here. How will regulation affect the adoption of EVs? How is the infrastructure, especially when you're talking about fuel cells? The battery cost, that's a big unknown, and so is the consumer demand and the consumer mind. They're trying to juggle all these unknowns, but what they do know is that electrification is the future and they have Blue Nexus to take care of this for them. Toyota and Lexus do, th that is. And this is where it gets spicy, guys. Here are their solutions, and there's quite a few. We're gonna break them down in the spreadsheet, but first of all, let's just start with the e-axle. So e-axle, a modular design that fits all. You will also be able to see them in hybrid vehicles. So there are six different modules and they definitely are tailored for different parts of the market. You can mix and match these and it'll be very interesting to see how they do it. Type zero for city cars, low power, low torque, and city car means like smart cars, small. That's how small they're talking here. Type one for compact cars, type 2A, compact mid-size cars, SUVs, type 2B, which this motor more than likely we saw in the ES prototype uh, with the Direct 4 powertrain that Lexus has teased a couple days ago. Of course, we're gonna go deep into that today after we go over all the motors. Often, guys, often you're gonna see this in the rear for these EVs and hybrids to provide a lot of additional space. So a lot of trunk space because of this really flat design. This one is for light commercial vehicles with immense amounts of torque. And this is when they're actually starting to put two speed automatic transmissions in these electric motors, uh, just like Porsche has done with their uh, Taycan. That's always a hard one for Taycan. It looks like Taycan, but it's Taycan. And then type four, if you guys didn't think Toyota and Lexus were working on high power motors, they're very, very conservative company, rest assured they are. To keep us in the dark, they, they don't have any specific numbers. If you look at all these other numbers, they have kilowatts, which is, we, we can convert that to horsepower, and then they have newt meters, which we can convert to pound feet of torque, but we have nothing here on this high power output. All it says is for premium cars, Lexus, um, and performance cars, which could be high performance Toyotas and Lexus as well. Achieving power performance, two speed automatic transmission suitable for premium cars. So that's all the e axle motors. What about hybrids? Because hybrids is there, they want to have 75 percent or more when it comes to hybrids for most of the most of the world to be honest uh, even in europe they're, they're still playing on 70 percent hybrids and that includes plug-in hybrids all right so the first hybrid vehicle motor is just a single motor off the top of my head i don't think there's any toyotas at this point in time that have a single motor that's all about to change with the upcoming more than likely take it with a grain of salt but it's all about to change with the upcoming tngaf platform uh, with the Tundra, the Land Cruiser, the LX, uh, potentially the Hilux, the Fortuner, the Tacoma, the Seco Sequoia. And I'm sure I'm missing something in there, uh, the Forerunner. And I'm sure I'm still missing something else too. But you guys get the idea. More than likely, one large motor connecting the engine and the transmission, and this is what they're gonna look like. And you can have an idea 
of the different sizes. They have different sizes based off the, the transmission length. Could they still bolt these to a 10 speed automatic, which my theory is that that's what Toyota and Lexus is doing for, for their TNGF platform? Yeah, I, I think so. But this is the first time that I've seen a single motor for a Toyota product. Um, pretty modest power here. And we're, don't worry, guys, if you need to convert this to horsepower, we're going to do it in my spreadsheet in a little bit. And then most of us are familiar with the two motor hybrid systems, whether it's a Prius or the RAV4 or the RAV4 Prime, they all have a two motor system up front. Okay, we know the RAV4 Prime has an additional motor in the back. We'll detail that, of course, as well in the spreadsheet today. So you have a small one here. This is roughly the same setup you see in a Prius. 50 kilowatts of power and 160 newton meter torque. That's really, really close to what you see in the Prius. So they're already making, uh, Aishin is already making this for the Prius and other Toyota modules, models, I should say, in the hybrid family. And then there's a larger one with 85 kilowatts of power and 200 newton meters of torque, which I think it can be modifiable to have uh, even more power and more torque, as we'll find out in a little bit. Spreadsheet time. I don't have my t-shirt yet. I'm still waiting for that t-shirt to come in. Spreadsheet time t-shirt. Let's get into the goods. All the EA axles are laid out on this first row here. Kilowatts match up with torque in the green, and then horsepower matches up with its torque in the orange. Their plans on implementing them to the market, which of course there's a whole, whole host of implementations here. Now I also have the hybrid motors in this call or this row as well with the single motors that i'm expecting expecting to see them to be honest in the tnjf platform the body on frame platform and then the two motors set up which we see whether it's a prius hybrid or a rav4 prime hybrid they showed us two of the two motor hybrid vehicle systems and i added another one here because the RAV4 Prime's electric motor in the front is pretty powerful. So we're gonna look at this area right here real quick. RAV4 Prime has a total of 302 horsepower, 179 horsepower, or at least that's the peak of the front motor. And what blue Nexus had as their peak power was 114 horsepower. So we know they're capable of building a larger one. That's why I put this uh, higher output system next to it. We know Toyota plans on having batteries supplied from 50 kilowatts up to 100 kilowatts based off of this uh, press release graph over here. And then let's talk about that ES. First thing we're going to do is talk about that ES that we saw that was a prototype. Uh, they call the Connect 4 is what I call it, but the Direct 4 with the E axle in the back. This is going to be incredible. So it has the same old two and a half liter four cylinder, just like the current ES hybrid does, as well as the uh, RAV4 Prime, roughly 130 horsepower, sorry, 130 kilowatts with 175-ish horsepower. You place it alongside of the hybrid motors up front with 107 horsepower, and you put that E-axle, this E-axle right here, to be in the, in the rear to provide a ton of extra power and torque to give it almost an all-wheel drive and a rear-wheel drive in certain circumstances character and driving char characteristics. And if they're able to do this, there's no need for a GS replacement. You just have one mid-size sedan that gives you front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive whenever you want it in this direct four setup. Total system power, I'm estimating just under 300 horsepower, could be more. And pound-feet of torque would be a massive 436 pound-feet of torque. This is quite a bit different from, from the RAV4 Prime. If we look at the RAV4 Prime, it's very front uh, heavy with power and torque with just a really small E-axle in the rear. I'm going to erase this here because we don't really know the motor in the rear. It's just a lot smaller. smaller. It doesn't fit with uh, the blue Nexus motors that have been communicated. So it's a much smaller one with about 50 horsepower. So in estimation, the RAV4 Prime only has about 335 horsepower compared to 100 more in that ES Direct 4 setup. And I think they're going to swipe the whole TNGA platform, or at least the TNGA K platform vehicles, which would be the RX, the NX, and the ES with this um, Direct 4 setup with 300-ish horsepower and well over 436 pound-feet of torque here. Uh, I, I would expect 45 miles per gallon in the ES, and you guys could have up to 50 miles of range in the ES. Of course, it would be lower on the NX and the RX. 
and that would allow Lexus to separate themselves massively from Toyota and their front wheel drive focused um, and lesser horsepower, lesser torque models. Now we're not gonna stop there. I think that's the one that's gonna definitely, we'll see the most of. It should permeate the market a little bit more. I see that only being a plug-in hybrid in order to deliver that much power through electrification, it needs to be a plug-in hybrid. So that's why I had EV range on there at 50. Now there's an RX 500E. That's my theory of that vehicle we saw running around. Who knows what it actually was? It could have been an NX, it could be a GX, but I'm thinking it's an RX just with a bunch of ridiculous uh, camouflage on it to throw us off. I think it's the next RX and I think that is gonna be the first electric, fully electric vehicle we're getting here in the United States. So there's no engine in it. They have two of the E-axle 2As, so one in the front, one in the rear for a total of 402 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. This thing would be fast, zero to 60 with that much power, maybe under five seconds, not quite sure. Range, it depends on how large of a battery they put in it. If they put a 75 kilowatt hour battery, I would expect 250 miles of range or more depending on uh, so many different things, right? The size of the vehicle, but for the 500E, I'm guessing if they put a 75 kilowatt hour power battery, 250 miles, and they could always go larger if they want. And eventually, that could there could be an ES 500E and an NX 500E. There's just no stopping with electrification. It's so easy to just slap batteries and motors on whatever you want, especially with the TNJ platform and the ETNJ platform. Okay, it's going to be very interesting how how quick electrification takes over the the Lexus lineup. Uh, we will talk a little bit about Toyota in a little bit. Uh, the RZ450e is the first ever trademarked kind of fully electric vehicle based on the ETNJ platform. I'm, I'm guessing it to have a lot of the similar features as a Subaru Evoltis, uh, but I would expect since it's a smaller vehicle than that RX to have about 200 horse, 201 horsepower. So the E-axle 2A in the front and the E-axle 2B in the rear. Um, so definitely a little bit more front wheel drive focused, but that should still be able to get us almost 400 pound-feet of torque and over 300 horsepower. Because if you remember the RX 450H, I think that's the only 450H in the lineup, um, the, but the RX 450H has 308 horsepower. And just by adding up a couple of the E axles, we can get exactly 308 horsepower. So I think that would make sense. 450 seems to be around 300 horsepower and it would make sense for this RZ as well. Guessing about 75 kilowatt hour battery if they want to put in there, 270 mile, 275 miles of range. Lastly, what about the first ever EV from Toyota or at least for Europe? And maybe hopefully it will come to America, but even if it doesn't, that technology is coming to America at some point in time. They put the 2A in the front, gives us 201 horsepower, a smaller E-axle motor in the rear for all wheel drive. And that gets us again, 300 horsepower, but not quite as much torque. Maybe they save the torque, the higher torque output motors for the Lexus lineup. To me, that's how you differentiate it. Give it a little bit more potent engines or motors in this case to the Lexus lineup to differentiate itself and its driving characteristics on paper as well. And I do think the RAV4 Prime is a good idea of the future of Toyota. What we saw in the ES with the Direct 4, I think that's more the future of Lexus. A lot more electrification to be spread to the rear where the Toyotas, it's mostly front, front wheel drive. That's my theory. But guys, I'll see you in the comments. It's really all I wanted to share today. I've been working on this spreadsheet for like four or five hours at this point in time. Uh, my voice is still gone from yesterday because I did two live streams yesterday. Thank you so much for coming out. And if you made it this far in the video, definitely smash the like button. Can't wait to see you down below. Take this with a grain of salt. This is just my predictions, but we have solid information to base it off of now with the blue Nexus information and Toyota and Lexus own information when it comes to Direct 4, Connect 4, as well as the type of batteries and motors they plan on putting their, in, their upcoming EVs, I should say. And guys, I'll know what else to say. Spreadsheet time has concluded. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace out.